so we've got some a forward further update on PJ5. So what we've got is our game of life code running and we're switching between CPU speeds because we still have a bit of a bug where if we write to the display too quick we get complete gibberish over it. So we're running the CPU at one speed for doing all the calculation for the game of life and memory and then we flip over and then just before we write to the display and once we've written to the display we flip back to the faster speed. So if I press start what you get now is a much quicker update of game of life We've still got a few random artifacts appearing. This is a bug with our code, we'll figure that out, but it is at least working quite well. Uh, yeah, and it's it's really nice to see it. Yeah. Um, so we'll leave it running for a bit. Because we do get a lovely sort of splodge happening around there. So just in case green green LEDs mean new life. A white LED is something that has stayed from the previous thing, and a red LED is something that has died from the previous stage. So you get a sort of barb pole thing going on up here, and this one's doing this same loop, and then you've got these other ones darting around the screen. There's no wrapping on the game of life here. Once it goes off the edge of the screen, it's gone. And for those of you who haven't heard of game of life before, it's a fairly standard thing that's been written on many different computers over the years over many years so yeah, i'm sure it's on wikipedia since the 60s yep yeah. it's on wikipedia and rosetta code and several other sites so it's quite fascinating to watch all the things develop i feel like i should be playing the music from vision on very pretty to look at. It's, good. it's constantly evolving. Um, one of the things I'd like to do later on when we get the random number generating is have a screen filled with random to start with um, and then just refresh it every so often. This goes on for about 300 iterations before it sort of stalls. We're on iteration 200 now. So yeah, it's still get these odd artifacts. Not sure what they are at the moment, but we'll figure it out. Got a bunch of these spinners, I think they're called. Mm -hmm. But something will hit them and cause it to stop. A lot of action going on down the bottom. A couple of spinners down there, and I think this is called a bread basket or something. Or a loaf or something like that. They all the shapes have common names. I don't know why. They're called loafs and but I mean that's called a spinner because it looks like it's whizzing round, but um, yeah, this thing. And I think that's iteration 300 odd. And yet yeah, we've kind of stalled now. We've got the spinners and not much changes from there on. So we'll um, move on to the next demo. Okay, we're back. This time we've got our Mandelbrot generator. We have got the clock running at two MIPS for the main process, and then we slow down to about 500 kilohertz or 500,000 MIPS. No, that's wrong. 500 KIPS. Okay, 500,000 instructions per second when we write to the display. We think we've got a bit of a problem with our slightly ropey, very long cable here, which is why we're having problems with the display and the speeds we're writing at. But we'll work on that. Um, so when I press uh, start, you should see the Mandelbrot being generated. It's very quick. So that's we're using 16-bit fixed-point maths for it, um, making very heavily extensive use of our 8x8 hardware multiplier that John designed, um, which is why this is so quick. Um, and there's 16 iterations per pixel. And the color, excuse my bad color scheme, is just based on the number of iterations. <laughs> I think I probably could have picked the colours a bit better or put them in an array or something. We've still got a few odd artefacts and again this is down to the display writing speeds um, which we need to work on. Um, but yeah, we're happy. It's working. 
Um, yeah, it's all good. Thank you for watching.